Income tax 2022-2023 reporting self-employment tax SE tax tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson living in Beverly Hills, 90210. No W-2 income. Instead, we have the business income down below. Let's take a look at the flow throughs of the business income, which come from the schedule c profit or loss from a business and that is an income statement format income minus expenses the net income then in essence flowing from the schedule c to the schedule one and then it flows into the form 1040 the form 1040 there it is we know that they also have to deal with the self-employment tax which is our point of focus this time that flows from the schedule c net income then to the schedule se self-employment tax calculating social security and medicare equivalent in essence to the payroll tax for the sole proprietor at in this case 14129 which flows into the schedule two the support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it there it is here which flows into the form 1040 page number two and there's the 14129 we get half of that as a deduction on page one of the form 1040 we can see here just to note that flow through that goes from the schedule c of course once again the 100,000 flow into the schedule se calculate the self-employment tax uh, social security and medicare half of that then 7065 in this case flows in to schedule one page number two which flows into the form 1040 and here we have it here so now we've got the 100,000 minus the 7,065 gives us the 92,935 AGI minus the standard deduction we're taking in this case is 12,950. We're letting the worksheet calculate the qualified business income deduction 15,997 uh, to get down to the 63,988 taxable income. Page two calculated the tax, federal income tax 9,009 or 692. The self-employment tax, 14129 for a total tax, 23821 30000 we are imagining were uh, uh, estimated tax payments, gets us to 6179 We're going to mirror that over here on our Excel worksheet in a formula basis. So we've got the 100000 that's flowing in from Schedule C which is in essence just an income statement noting in practice you might do a whole nother worksheet for schedule c to look at uh, adjustments to income we have a whole nother course or section on that if you want to dive into like building a, a worksheet to help you do the data input but in essence we're gonna we got the net income that's flowing in here then we have the adjustments to income uh, let's focus first down here the other taxes the other taxes we put in another sheet similar to what we would see on the tax return other credits and taxes where we have the i'm sorry other taxes here which is the 14 uh, 129 that flows in here we also have the 7065 which is half of that which is coming from this sheet adjustment to income half the self-employment tax that gets us to the 92 uh, 936 the standard deduction 12 950 then we pulled in the qualified business income deduction calculated from the tax software to get the 63989 which should match the 63989 we saw over here and then we have the tax calculated from the software 
at 9692. 9692. There's the 14 and there's the 30,000 that we made for estimated payments to get to the bottom line of 6179. So that's the outline. All right, so we're focused on the self employment tax. So you'll recall that if I go to the Schedule C, if I had employees, welcome employees, then I would be dealing with payroll taxes. And if I had payroll taxes, then I would have to deal with Social Security and Medicare that I would have to withhold from my employees. And I would also have to pay my portion of Social Security and Medicare based on their income and expense to me, payroll expense, right? I have to calculate my portion. In this case, however, we're talking about self-employment tax for sole proprietorship. We don't, in this case, issue ourselves a Schedule C because we're not a separate entity. Instead, we're just gonna take the net income, in essence, from the Schedule C and then calculate the self-employment tax. It's similar to a situation where we're an employee of another company in that we have to pay both the employer and employee side of it. So, so in other words, if you were an employee and you made 100,000 versus if you made 100,000 on the Schedule C, you would be better off from a, from a, from a, a taxes on Social Security and Medicare to be an employee because you would only be withholding your portion half of the Social Security and Medicare, whereas here, you're gonna be treated as though you are both the employer and employee, at least to the, to, for the most part, paying for the most part like twice as much. But remember that it's also still beneficial to be a sole proprietor sometimes because you might have expenses that you can write off that you can't write off if you're a W-2 employee and you have more flexibility and that, and that kind of stuff too. So that's the general idea. So the net income then rolls into the schedule SE. So we can see it right here, the 100,000, and then it multiplies at times as 0.9235 for the standard method that we would use. And so it, it's actually re recording the tax, not on the full 100%, but on the 0.9235% in essence. And then we calculate down here, the social security and, and Medicare portions on it. That's how we get to that 14,129, which is the tax, the 7,000 then being half of that as the deduction. Let's try to mirror that over in our Excel worksheet, just so we can understand this calculation and possibly work on making an, an Excel worksheet that you can kind of use to double check it and get a better understanding of it. So I'm gonna go back on over here. I'm gonna go back to my self-employment uh, worksheet and see if we can just put something together. It's not going to be perfect, but it can, it could possibly help us to get an idea of the calculation. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to make this skinny over here and I'm going to do the self-employment tax, self-employment tax. And so boom, let's do that. Let's make this black and white, maybe black and white. And then I'm going to pull in the self-employment income which oftentimes you would think would come from the Schedule C. So I'm gonna have to adjust this as I go here. I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna bring this in from the Schedule C, which is the 100,000. That's gonna be our starting point. And then you can see here, it takes that 100,000 and basically multiplies it times the point uh, 9235. So if line, point nine two three five. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say, okay, let's say times, percent let's just say times times percent percent of what did i say i said i said uh 92.35 percent 0.9235 let's make that a percent by going to the home tab number percent to find it and there we go and then i'm going to underline it here and then we'll get self employ uh income subject to tax or something like that my subtotals may not be the best name but we're gonna say we got the 92 now it could get a little bit tricky because if i had a loss then we're not going to have any self-employment tax so i could say i might i might want to want to put a more tricky formula in here in the event of a loss but let's leave it at this for now and we'll get into that later 
And so then we've so we've got the 92, and then we've got the the maximum for the Social Security and Medicare. So notice that points. 0.062 is usually what you pay for social security if it was a sole proprietor we're going to double that to the social security rate we pay here which is the 12.4 and then we double the 0.0145 to the 2.9 that's what i mean by we pay the so both the employer and employee portion but before i do that we also have the cap of the threshold for the social security so this would be the wages as long as it's under the threshold. Now I've got to break out the Social Security and Medicare to some degree because, because they're treated differently with regards to this cap. So let's start off this, let's say this was Social Security, let's say this is Medicare. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is gonna be the income subject, subject to tax. Uh, income subject to tax before, before cap. And then let's say that the cap for Social Security is, I'll put that here for reference, uh, 147,000, 147,000. So if I go over that number, then I'm not gonna have any more Social Security past that number. I'm gonna make these two black and white, black, white, and centered. The black didn't show up, white and centered. So there we go. And then I'm gonna say, okay, so for the Social Security, it's gotta be, it's, let's let's actually pull this over here and I'm gonna say it needs to be the lesser of these two numbers for Social Security so on the so I'm gonna say this is I can use a min function so it equals the min the min give me the smaller of these two numbers you can also use an if number if this number is bigger than that number but the min is an a, an easier calculation and for this one I'm just gonna pick up the one the this number because there's no cap although there could be a, an added medicare calculation which we might get into or might not be able to get into here because i don't want to get too detailed on it so there we go so there's the there's our our amount and then we're going to multiply it by the rates so rates let's say the rates for social security social security card remember it would have been if you look at your w-2 it would be 0.062 if you were an employee, but we're gonna double that times two. I'm gonna make that a percent, home tab, number group, percentified, add some decimals, 12.4. This one's gonna be, if it, it would be 0.0145 for an individual W-2 employee, but I'm gonna multiply it times two because you're like the employer and employee portion. So they hit you on both sides with that one. So there we have it, there's our percents. So then I can say, so then I can say the tax is going to be equal to this times this, and this will be equal to this times this, and then I can equals the sum of these two, and this will be like the total for our simple, all our simple calculation. So I'm going to say this is the total. Let's make this black and white and centered, and we could see that that's going to be you know, the total here. And so that looks good. So now I'm going to, I'm going to move this cell reference because this is where the cell reference is coming from on the, well, let's just do it this way. Let's say, let's go to my, my first page and say that this number needs to be coming from other taxes, other taxes. I'm just going to pick up this one for now. So it pulls up the proper number. And for my adjustments, I'm gonna say this equals then my taxes, other taxes, this one divided by two. And so there we have it. So other taxes, so this 14,130 and we're off by a dollar. That's okay, I'm cool with that. All right, so that's the, that's the, general, that's the general idea. All right, so, so now we could have a situation, what if there was a loss? If there was a loss, we wouldn't have any self-employment tax, right? So I could go back on over here and say, okay, what if we had a loss? You could say this was 130,000. Now I'm gonna go back on over and go, okay, Schedule C, 
has a loss of 10,000. There is no schedule SE because I don't have any income to record it on. So let's mirror that over here. If I go to the income statement, 130,000, 10,000 loss, pulling that onto my other taxes. So now see that, see, see I'd like this to come out to zero and it comes out to a negative number. So what I'd like to do is make this cell be zero if it's less than one. So to do that, I can use an if, a logic function. So I'm gonna say equals if brackets, if this times this is greater than zero, then that's a comma, I would like you to do this times this. But if not, comma, do a zero. And I know I did that kind of fast because it's not an Excel course, but that's the general idea of the logic function. And so now we come up to a zero here and everything should, should mirror out properly in that case. So that should work out. All right, well, what about a scenario where we have income that's greater than the, the, the cap of the 147,000? Let's do that. Say, okay, what if we did that happen? Then I'm gonna say we had Let's say this was back. Let's just make this. Let's make this twenty thousand, and this is going to be uh, one hundred. Let's say two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. So now I have income of one hundred eighty thousand. So what's that going to do to the schedule SE? It's gonna. It's gonna cap the Social Security side at the 147 but not the medicare medicare co-payments for a year side and notice you might see this is why you might be thinking why couldn't i if let's do this back on over here if i go if i go this was up to 200,000 and payments and credits so then you might say uh income subject this not 200,000 K the heck paso, and this needs to be 20,000. Does that do it? Is that what I had over here? 200,000 200, minus 20,000. Yes, indeedy. All right, let's bring that on over here. So you might say, why can't I take this plus, why can't I take this that comes from there and just multiply it times from this plus this and would be that and you could if you didn't hit that cap because then you're just combining the social security and medicare but you can't because there's a cap on the medic on the social security if you have income over 147 so in this case notice what it did it said okay 180,000 times that percent gives us the 166230 for social security i capped it taking the the min the lesser of those two numbers but for medicare we did not cap it and so now you've got to multiply this one times the 12.4 social security rate and this one times the 2.9 so you could sum it up at the 2349 which is what we got over here right 2349 is that what we got 2349 boom so that's what happens if you have a loss or, or a situation that you go over the cap? And you may not need to, to recalculate this. This might be too much detail, but you want to be able to kind of understand what's going to be happening as income level goes over that amount. Now, the other thing, just to note that it's possible that you have two Schedule Cs, right? If you had two businesses, you'd have two Schedule Cs possibly. I won't put in all the other information. I'm just going to say the other one had income of 20,000. And if I pull that one over, now, if I go to my Schedule C's, I got Schedule C 1 and 2. But the two Schedule C's are for the same Social Security number that we're using to pay in to kind of the equivalent of payroll taxes. So, so that means I can put those two Schedule C's together, the 20,000 and over here, the 180,000 to pull into the Schedule C with just Schedule SE with just one Schedule SE. However, if they were married, then as we, we've talked about this a little bit when we looked at the, the married before, but you could have a situation where they're married and then you have two separate businesses possibly by the two couples, and then you would need two separate Schedule SEs, right? So if they're married, it's really important 
to say this isn't the taxpayer anymore, it's the spouse. So now they both have their own business. And so then if I pull that one over, now I've got two Schedule C's with two different businesses. And then I have two different Schedule SE's because for for Noah and and uh, Neo and, and Jane, because they have their own, because it needs to be applied to their own account. Note that that's really important because it's so it's something that can be easily overlooked because the net the net impact on the total self-employment tax will likely be the same whether you do that or not but you will have a difference in terms of who's being allocated the income to their to their to their social security which will impact the benefits that they get on retirement so you could get into like the weeds in terms of how much could i could i put into social security between the two married couples how much should be allocated to each of them to maximize the benefits and try to organize your your working business structure to try to maximize that some people uh, do that or it might be it might be worthwhile to think about that you can also have a situation where you have one business one schedule c with two partners which we talked about a little bit before when we when we think when we think about married filing joint or married filing separate and you would think that you might have to there's a couple ways you could deal with that it's now kind of a partnership in one sense so you could actually have an, a partnership even though it's a married couple which means you would have to file another return and then use the k-1s from the partnership return to file the proper uh, amounts to the proper se's to se schedule se for each individual or if you're in a community property state you might be able to to uh have an exception to that and break it and use one one item so for example if i delete this and I said it was joint, it was joint. Then I can go back on over here. Now I have one Schedule C, but it broke out the income uh, evenly because, because it's a joint property or community property is the assumption between the two Schedule SEs for the married couple that has the business because they're splitting it down the middle because they're one entity married couple was the concept. But you got to make sure that you're in a, like a you're in the proper community property state and that you're a pot that you can do that. Uh, the other the other option would be possibly to try to file two Schedule C's, giving the proper allocation between the the partners on the two Schedule C's. That's kind of tedious to do because then you'd have to take your income statement and kind of break it out and, and data input it twice. But it might be easier to do than it would be to do a whole nother return for a partnership and do the flow through entity it would certainly be cheaper if you got a tax professional uh, to, to do it possibly to do a partnership return because that usually costs more. So, uh, but those are, so those are some options to kind of look into there. Make sure you're understanding not just the tax for the current year that you're paying to social security, but also if you're a married couple or even if not a married couple, but it gets more complex if you're a married couple trying to determine what the impact is on your benefits for paying into social security between the two spouses so that you can think about how you can maximize your your working scenario to try to maximize the benefits since you're paying into the social security system and everything